Well, it's nearly the end of May. And so I thought we'd have another little wander around the plot. Things have changed since the last video. Trees have greened up, flowers have come out, and we've done quite a lot of planting and sowing of seed. So before the flowers fade or get battered in this wind, let's have a look round. I'm starting where we usually start, which is down at the far end of the plot, where you will notice we've planted our sweet peas. We've used our own coppiced hazel poles and created a sort of a rustic structure. And the sweet peas have all been planted in compost and are being kept well watered. Cardoon's getting a bit of a battering today. Not only is it windy, it's also quite sunny and it's not been much rain at all, so we're having to water again. In the flower bed, poached egg plants stand out and rising above them, we've got some battered bearded irises. We've planted a couple of dahlias, one there and one right over there. Rose is looking particularly healthy. And we've got some buds. The Cerinthi has come from goodness knows where. We once had some planted right over the far side of the plot, but we've never had any here. This part of the plot is all planted up now. Got the onions, which are growing fairly well. The potatoes, we've got Casablanca on this side and athlete on this side. At the moment, the Casablanca is doing a little bit better than the athlete. Just make sure I don't trip over the hose pipe. These are our first lot of peas which are all through and doing really well. We did make a video of planting those which I'll put a link to at the end. And then the last vegetable bed on this part of the plot is the brassica bed. which I hope you can see through the mesh, which is there to protect against pigeons, caterpillars and whitefly. Brassicas are growing very well. So I wander over to this part of the plot.
these actually are strawberries from last year they survived a bit better than the strawberries on the other side of the plot the ones on flower are cupid and the ones that are producing loads of leaves those are malwina they're a later variety the chives are doing well and the Joan J raspberries behind them are growing very well this year as well we've got two more rows of potatoes here one's osprey and the other one is Nadine got some more dahlias in this bed that we've just planted today and then in this bed these are our onions that were planted in autumn and garlic that was planted at the same time then over here we've got a newly planted rhubarb patch with lots of borage seedlings coming up amongst it which will need to be taken out or at least thinned out the flowers are sweet rocket then we have the black raspberry and kiwi isai, the kiwi berry which got hammered by frost but is now springing back got a second sweet pea bed here same setup, same lot of rustic poles and in the old wheelbarrow some nasturtiums are just starting to shoot this is a globe artichoke you don't harvest it but the bees love it got two more rows of potatoes which are Winston and Vivaldi my black currants are starting to have berries a bit concerned about the quince because it doesn't look as though much fruit has set some fruit set on the jostaberry some self-sown foxgloves this is a white currant didn't do very well with gooseberries last year they got mildew so I'm hoping they don't this year and they have there's some mildew Oh dear. The Cerinthia has managed to find its way onto this bed as well. That's our Glencoe raspberry, purple raspberry. wonder whether this gooseberry's got any mildew or not.
looks as though there is on the back of the leaves. The pear bed has got quite a few flowers out. There's the um, foxglove that is still in bud. And quite a lot of aquilegia. Got loads of green fly on it. But also ladybirds. And then we've got one or two pairs on Red Williams. Invincible, this one very rarely has any fruit at all. Must be a pollination issue. The blueberries and a helianthemum down there. Not sure where these came from. They look a bit like um, a wallflower, but we've never planted them. Go past the red currants, which have got quite a bit of fruit. And there's the first little sign of reddening there which means we'll soon have to net or the blackbird will move in. Well, all sorts of birds will move in. I think the puckering is to do with aphids. More rhubarb. Now this bed here is the one that was totally overgrown last year. Well, these two beds in fact. And we've just planted some rocky potatoes in there. They're mainly a sacrificial crop because we don't really expect to get much from them. They're more to break up the soil. And more potatoes in this bed. Plant plenty of potatoes. Now in this bed we've got, the sun's just gone in, Cara, Kestrel and Casablanca, the ones that were left over. And then at the far end we've got some Sarpomira. which haven't grown as, well, they're not as well on just yet. But you harvest them late anyway. They're mainly there as a bit of a banker in case we get blight. Just avert your eyes, got the old strawberry bed. And then here, we've got the first sowing of hardy annuals. And they, there are some, probably can't see it, see them because they're so tiny. But there are some seedlings just starting to come through. It's just a case of keeping them all well watered now. Most of the new raspberries are growing, except for just one variety. Which is showing no signs of life at all. The Glendy. It's 
sweet rocket gets in the most unusual of places. Now I usually plant some or sow some annual seeds in autumn and this is the result. Some early flowers. Got some poppies just about to burst into flower. Some calendula. A borage that's come from somewhere or other. And the cornflowers. I've got quite a few flowers and probably be flattened by this wind. I'm going to pick some of those today. Oh, right over there. We've actually got a poppy that's come out. This bed is our trial potato bed. So in here we've got six varieties, four tubers each of British Queen, Apache, Elfie, Jazzy Premier and finally Rudolph. Wonder if there were red ones. And then behind we've got our first lot of broad beans which is starting to flower don't know if you've ever noticed it but broad bean flowers have the most lovely perfume and then the second lot we've just planted this week their master green, masterpiece green long pod I can't remember what the first ones are and the labels worn off. Got some more onions. And shallots, which are all growing quite well. And those are our all gold raspberries which will soon need thinning out. This is our heather bed. Just dwarf heathers, one's dwarf and one's stead and the other one's hid cot. Got lots of flower buds. And then we've the new strawberry bed that we looked at in another video, which again, I'll post the link to. Whoops. The Wigelia is looking, or Wigela, is looking lovely at the minute. Lots of flowers. Just brush past. Potentillas are on flower. This part of the plot hasn't got very much to show at the moment. We've planted these this week. We've got some more 
peas, second lot of peas, and we've planted some sugar snap peas as well in that, those two trenches. And then this bed, <coughs> excuse me, was used to, or was planted really, just to use up the potato tubers that we had left. So in here we've got Nadine, Winston, Osprey, two lots of Osprey, and it's a bit of a leftover bed is this because they're the leftover leeks, it's just a mixture because the other leeks were planted in this bed. So in this bed we've got Osman, Porella and Musselberg. under the fleece to try and protect it from carrot fly we've got our carrots sewn nothing up yet so we grow early market flaky and autumn king and then needing to be watered before we go home We've got our parsnips, which are gladiator, which we grow most years. And the poor rhubarb is getting very tattered. A bit concerned with the plum trees because despite being given a winter wash it does look as though some of the branches have been attacked by plum aphid which can severely affect the harvest. We do get quite a lot of birds browsing them actually so we wouldn't really want to spray them. And then finally, we've got our toeberry. Well, that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed the tour of our allotments. When you come back again in June, no doubt we'll have more to show you. So that's it for now. See you later. Bye bye.